Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today answering easily the most common question I received during my Fallout 76 Wastelanders stream. By the way, we're going to be doing a lot of that streaming lately, so be sure to go ahead and follow me on Twitch. There'll be a link in the description down below. Hopefully, I see you there and we can play some Wastelanders together. But anyway, during that stream, people would just slide in and be like, Maddie is the time now. Maddie, is it good? Maddie, should I buy Fallout 76 for Wastelanders? Now, the latter of those series of questions I will address right now. I'm not going to tell anyone to spend any money with this video because, quite frankly, I've only played four hours of it. The reason I'm making this first impressions video is because I literally got that question probably every 30 seconds during my stream. And so I thought, okay, throw the discussion plans to the wind, throw the review plans to the wind. We're doing first impressions now. As I said, I really don't think I have enough hands on time to direct anyone if they should spend $60. But this first impressions video can give you a good gauge on where your interest level could be at with this expansion and how much time you want to invest in researching it. So hopefully I can help you out with that. And if you want more intermittent updates as we crawl to the final review, the streams will be a good place to ask me questions. And I would be regretful if I did not clarify to everyone that 76's Wastelanders update is not a fix-all. It does not magically put the game back together. The vanilla game very much still does exist and it's still not very good. There is a degree of bugginess, although my experience was relatively bug-free, uh, you know, like a floating object here or an AI companion teleporting to in front of me, little things like that, but nothing in the terms of quests not working, skipping around the map, falling through the map, just ridiculous stuff. Overall, my time when it came to performance wasn't that bad. There was also some frame dips, but I want to make sure people know Wastelanders is to, I think, establish a framework for the future, and there is a lot of content there that we're about to get into, but this doesn't suddenly fix 76 as a whole. There's still a base game that needs work. All right, with all of that out of the way, I like it, guys. I say that with a pretty big smile because it's been a while since I've liked anything Fallout, and that feels so weird to say as, like, originally a Fallout channel. Like, I love Fallout, man. It's my bread and butter. I love this series, and 76 lost even me, right? And so I walked away from it. I said, I'll come back when you earn it, and um, Bethesda worked. They worked, and here we are with Wastelanders, and it's not perfect. It's not even near perfect. Sorry, I hate to say it, but uh, it's not. Uh, there are some flaws, but it is pretty good from what I've seen. And if they can continue this from what I've experienced so far, it could be a framework worth buying into. We'll see, though. Like I said, I'm coming also from the perspective of someone who's level 80 hopping into just Wastelanders content. This is one thing worth considering because you may be interested in buying into 76 for the first time and you'll have to interweave between the original story of 76, which isn't that good, as well as the Wastelanders content, which is good. So there's a little bit, there's, I sounded like a pirate there. There's a bit of a mixture though of content, which may not go over as well as for me who enjoyed just the Wastelanders content only. Okay, so let's start off with the story. I'm liking it so far. The first hour, I was sort of going through the motions, um, but ultimately, as the new content started to hit me, because I previewed some of it already for those of you who know, uh, but as the new content started to hit me, it caught my interest more. I got into a rhythm, and I found myself really engaged to the point where at times I was like struggling to talk to the Twitch chat, which I think is a good thing because while I don't like to neglect you guys, it also means that the game's doing something right. And so with all that said, what did they do right? Number one, dialogue has been great so far. Um, let's just say this much, right? I, I say this as someone who likes Fallout 4 still to this day. I, I support the game. I think it was fun. It was not great, but it was fun. Fallout 76 has more speech checks, skill checks than Fallout 4 ever had by like a large number, an extremely large number. And even cooler is that Fallout 76 considers some really interesting options when they do the skill checks. Now, let me use one example. So I had completed the Enclave storyline in Fallout 76. Now, you can also get this option through Camp McClintock and completing the side quest over there. But I had completed the Enclave general storyline, or I'm sorry, I was the Enclave general after that storyline. And I was having a conversation with a Mr. Handy and I had an option called U.S. General, and I thought it was really cool 
that because I completed a quest line, it unlocked a very specific skill check for my character. It reflected the content I had completed and unlocked a new way to get through a quest without any hassle, without any speech checks, without any combat. And I really, really like that. To me, that stuck out like a sore thumb to the point where I felt like I had to just tip my cap to Bethesda because I feel like that type of stuff is foreign. When it comes to the choice and consequence though, I have yet to make this decision that's earth shattering, that I see the ripples throughout the universe and I don't really expect that it is an online game, but I'm more so looking for it in the characters, right? Because when you make a decision, it's in an instanced environment. So it just impacts in that area. So if I do something, I've seen responses from characters, but I wanna see heavy consequences and we'll see down the line if that plays off. So far, I've had some choices that I've made, but I have yet to see anyone tap me on the shoulder later on in the story and go, hey man, remember when you did this or hey, cause you did this, now this is happening. Uh, nothing like that has occurred yet, sadly. But with that said, I did have one pretty difficult choice, I'd say, to make. And I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going to show it on screen uh, because it actually, for those of you who watch the stream, you'll know, completely caught me off guard. Um, it just happened and I was like, whoa, okay. Like this is actually, this is a fallout choice. It's like a no one wins choice. You, you felt kind of bad. And I was impressed with that because... I mean, even Fallout 3, I just did a 2020 review for Fallout 3. Even Fallout 3 very much poises this decision of good, evil. But yet, 76 brought up a decision where it was morally gray. You really weren't winning no matter what. And seeing how the characters responded to it was cool. And I think Fallout fans have something to be excited about there. We don't know, though, or at least I don't currently at this point in time know, if... 10 more hours in, I'm still getting choices like that. If 10 more hours in, this is still as interesting as it is now. Um, but I'm curious about things. I'm curious about the treasure. I'm curious about the missing people. I'm curious about these factions. I'm also kind of surprised because I find the settlers that I've interacted with so far, being Duchess and her crew at the Wayward Bar, to kind of be users. They sort of send you around on quests and keep asking favors of you where I'm like, really leaning towards the raiders when i get a hold of them they're a group that i have yet to meet i have yet to also see the reputation bar take effect and once again i played for four hours guys so i think that says a lot to how much content is here because i really you know didn't take any breaks i think the first 20 minutes i spent time just reorganizing my character because it had been i think over well over half a year since i had played that game like since august or july even it had been a really long time since i played 76 and so outside of that i was just playing wastelanders content straight up that means that there is a lot more than i expected i also noticed some area overhauls i don't want to use the morgantown airport example for the millionth time in a video but i want to bring it up here just because it was a lot more impactful than I expected too. You see, I found this guy sleeping here and it turns out that the responders who died here, one of them was his brother. And he starts talking about like how he's just counting down the days, he's got cancer. And I'm just like, dude, this is sad. Like he was in a very deep rut. And then in this very fallout dark way, right? Like you learn this guy's situation, his reality, and you can either offer to talk to him or you can do an intelligence check to say, hey, your time's limited. You should give me your supplies. And that's like so fucked up, right? But at the same time, I thought to myself, dude, dude, like that's a fallout choice, right? That's what I thought the whole time. I was like, that's a fallout choice. That's what we're looking for. Like that level of darkness in the universe where, I mean, I could just be like, hey, let me take your supplies. And, uh, it, it's just crazy that 76 offers those wow options a lot more than even Fallout 4 did. So it does really show that Bethesda's been listening. So I said it's not all perfect. What didn't work out? Well, this may not stay, but I do want to mention it because there may be some vets hopping in who want to air this part of the discussion out, and I think it's totally valid. And I think the only reason it's an issue for me is because I know something's coming that can amend this flaw. Otherwise, I'd just say, oh, I'm in the early game areas. It makes sense. So as I said, I'm in the early game areas in these first couple of hours, going to locations, taking enemies out. The problem is, I think the highest level I saw was level 60 and I'm level 80. So I was really just plowing through combat. 
very easily. Most of the enemies I fought were level 1, level 5, level 10, most common. Like, it just really, really had me shut my brain off during the combat sections. And I know combat's never been a huge part of Fallout in the terms of why you go into that universe, but... When I know that one Appalachia, for those who aren't familiar with what that is, it's sort of a copy of what Elder Scrolls Online did with one Tamriel, where regions of the game will scale up or down based on your respective level, and even if you're in a group. So if I'm level 80, which I am, and you're level 20, your enemies will be level 20, mine will be level 80, and it doesn't matter where we are. And I really like that because it does make each region just competitive, more intense, more interesting to battle in, and you get more XP too when you take out enemies. I played for four hours that I didn't level up once through all the quests I completed, through all the enemies I defeated. I did not level up once, and that's because I was fighting these level one, level two creatures, and that was kind of boring. And part of the reason why it bugged me was because I knew that they had talked about this one Appalachia, this, this one wasteland update that could essentially amend my problem. And so I think that's why I took greater issue with it. But still, it was a snag because it got, I don't want to say boring, but uh, it just nearly wasn't as fun as I know it could be. And for some folks, maybe their patience will be rewarded if they wait down the line for this update to come out. Uh, but if you're a new player, I think you'll be good because you will have the proper level to experience all that content where I was very much overleveled. Um, now, with all of that in mind too, there is the consideration of if you're new or if you're a outstanding player. For me, I've been around for a while, so I'm level 80. I completed the main story. I completed a lot of the side content. I've hopped in and out for updates to make sure my opinion is at least valid when I talk about Fallout 76 in respective videos. Um, but for some of you, your experience may be different because when you start off Fallout 76, now you have two main storylines. But for me, my main storyline for the base game of 76 is complete. So I just have Wastelanders content to take in. So my opinion may be a lot more positive than some. For those who are hopping in level one, first time, quite frankly, you might not have as good of a time because you have to circle back into that vanilla content for 76. And the vanilla content it's not what people like about the game. You know, like it, it's been amended to some extent. Like I mentioned, we can meet that guy at the Morgantown airport. There are different locations filled out with humans. And I do like that. I think it's a really good change for the game. It's quality of life, if anything. Um, and it inherently makes all the areas around you more interesting because you know there are people there. Like there was one point in the stream where I was actually really caught off guard because I was looking for a person who was hidden around in this fair or this park and I found him up on a rooftop and I just instinctively thought he'd be dead because that's what 76 has been. It's been just, as uh, IGN said, just chasing ghosts. And I was surprised to find him up there and have a conversation with him. And I used my strength skill check to go ahead and strong arm him out of his money. Um, so that type of stuff was great, but that was just my experience as someone who was playing with a higher level account, ignoring all of the main game content because I just have Wastelanders to experience. That's the add-on for me. Also, for new players, I have to consider this. I mentioned this skill check where I had completed a quest line, so it remembered that. And a lot of the skill checks I went through were like four and up, five and up, eight and up at one point in time. And if you're a new player, you're not gonna have access to that. And so there was one group I met, which was this interesting, I don't wanna call them raiders, but they were called free radicals. And I listened to an audio tape and it turns out that they were interrogating this woman trying to find out where this treasure was, but they, um, they couldn't get the answer out of her. So they took a more passive approach and she's like, you're gonna let me live. And he's like, yeah, go upstairs, get some food. He sounded really kind all of a sudden. He's like, maybe this will jog your memory. But this raider that I was encountering had the option to either skill check by him and in turn avoid combat entirely with his entire base, or, and this is a big or, if I couldn't do that, which those skill checks were relatively high even for a beginning player, I had to fight everyone. And so I do wonder if there's going to be a lot of situations where new players are forced into combat continuously like we kind of felt with Fallout 4, whereas veteran players like myself are going to be like, dude, I had options. I was like, do I kill this person? Do I not? Do I take out the whole base? Do I talk my way through it? Like, I, I wonder if the options as I, I observe them will be more geared towards veteran players because some of the cool options I've seen so far would only be available for me. And they may sound cool in practice, but for you when you experience it as a new player, 
there may not be as much. So these are things worth keeping in mind. And, and this, this perspective of the discussion is so necessary because if you're going in through, through my lens, like I said, it's a veteran thing. And if you're a veteran already, that means you've played 76, but this could also be helpful for you if you're a returning player. If you're a returning player and you've played enough of 76, this absolutely is a valid reason to come back in. It's free anyway. It's a big download, but it is free. And yeah, man, I've enjoyed it. It's like I said, it's not perfect. Oh my God, wait, I can't believe I even forgot to mention this. Someone told me in the chat and I verified there's a radio host. And I was like, how did Bethesda not even try to market that aspect? Like with Three Dog, Mr. New Vegas, like everyone loves the radio hosts. And I couldn't listen to much of it because of the fact that's of course, Twitch would silence my entire VOD, which is understandable. Um, but with that said, um, it's just the fact that there is a DJ there. So who knows if that ends up being good or bad, but I'm just excited at that aspect. It's like they, they filled it out to be the Fallout game it should be. They've even updated old conversations. So you can visit Rosie at the top of the world, this really interesting Raider bot, and you'll actually have a conversation with her. And I was like, thank you. Like, this is the stuff we're looking for. So all I can hope for the future is that this continues to be as enjoyable as it has been, but also that Bethesda does end up adding on to this. That'll do it for me, ladies and gentlemen. I hope to hear from all of you in the comments down below. What do you think of Fallout 76 Wastelanders? As you can tell, I've enjoyed it, but it's not perfect. So with all of that out of the way, I'd love to hear from you. Fire away. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. Big thank you to all the patrons who continue to support this content. And I'll talk with all of you soon. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.